What is going on, Eye Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're going to talk about something special. What's the best intermittent fasting protocol based on the current studies that we have? I'm sure that you're curious to know, based on the research that we have, which one is the best when you put 16 8 versus one meal a day versus the warrior diet versus alternate day fasting versus 5 2, etc. etc. And based on the studies that we have currently, the success rate of each of these when it was put up against caloric restriction, the dropout rates. That's going to be some of the metrics that I'm going to use to base this answer, which comes from the study itself. And I'm going to go ahead and break that down in this video. Stay tuned. Quickly before we start, this video is brought to you by yours truly, Fledge Fitness and the Fledge Fitness Jump Rope. If you haven't gotten yours yet, what are you waiting for? You know these jump ropes always sell out and with the ergonomic design, the aluminum handle and the swivel design, you can't go wrong with the Fledge Fitness Speed Jump Rope. As always, the link will be down in the description or you can click the top right hand corner and it will take you right to the website where you can purchase yours for only $16.50. And of course, as always guys, thank Thank you for your support. Now let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Okay, not gonna make you wait at all. I'm gonna give you the answer right away. It's the 16-8 method, which means 16 hours of fasting, eight hours of eating. All right, now hopefully no one out there that doesn't do the 16-8 is mad because this is based on the evidence that we have. Now understand, I personally, for example, do not do the 16-8. I do the warrior diet, which is 20 versus four. 20 hours of fasting, four hours of eating. And this is the protocol that fits me the best, that I enjoy the best. And I even modify it, which is what I call the war mad, which is where I combine the warrior diet and the OMAD diet, and I give myself four hours to eat one meal, but then it could just be a different time within those four hours every day. So one day might be at two o'clock, the other day might be at three o'clock, and then the next day might be at two again, or the next day might be all the way at four. But I always know that bare minimum, I'm doing 20 hours of fasting. At most, I could be doing 23 hours. So that's my protocol, even understanding that the science that exists says that the 16-8 is the best protocol. Now, I'm not basing this on anything other than the studies themselves. Of course, there are limitations to the 16-8, but in terms of consistency, in terms of positive outcomes when putting the 16-8 versus caloric restriction group, when equating for calories, when equating for protein, there's always a benefit that's seen in the 16-8. Now, this also comes from its popularity. Because it's so popular, more studies have been done. You using the 16-8 model. Also, another protocol that has been utilized a lot in studies is the alternate day fasting model because that's also pretty popular. But unfortunately, the researchers love to modify it and they don't do a true fast during the fasting period. They have you eat about 25% of your caloric intake during that fasting period, interrupting a true fast so we don't have too much data in terms of when someone is completely fasting for that amount of time before they eat using the alternate day fasting method. Because it's so easy to get the 16-8 clear ethically due to its smaller time frame, and of course, this is emerging research when it comes to intermittent fasting, so you might have a lot of people be hesitant to even say, okay, go ahead and do the warrior diet or go ahead and do the one meal a day diet. There are more hesitation to those diets than there is with the 16-8. So it lets the 16-8 actually shine. But where else does it shine? There have been one meal a day studies that exist. There have been warrior diet studies that exist. But one really powerful thing that the 16-8 has over all of those others is that the drop rate is always significantly less than the warrior diet or even one meal a day. There have been many studies where the one meal a day diet has had significant dropout rates. And that is concerning because one of the things that matter is the longevity of you actually following the protocol because inevitably you want to find a system for health purposes, for losing weight, for maintaining weight. You want to find a protocol that's going to work for you 
for the rest of your life. So if the dropout rate is higher for one protocol versus the other, then it does put a question there that will the general public be able to adopt this protocol? And with the 16.8, dropouts are so low, it's near non-existent. So it does show an element of being able to follow this protocol, and that's very important. Also, they've shown this protocol, the 16.8 model, be used with things like resistance training with athletic trained males that actually actually been going to the gym for more than five years so they're not beginners and this is important because it's a different dynamic and even moving it from just obese people to people who do weight training there was positive elements that were seen with the 16-8 versus caloric restriction there hasn't been a study that has been published with one meal a day for example looking at trained athletes over five years the 16-8 has that in its back pocket and even when it comes to muscle retention for example, if you look at Dr. Stephen Anton's clinical trial of over 16 different studies, there were alternate days fasting studies sprinkled in there and 16-8 studies sprinkled in there. Around six different 16-8 studies and around five different alternate day studies, what he saw was that there was some muscle loss seen in the alternate day fasting group because of the, how long those daily fasts are. But with the 16-8, they were able to retain all their muscle. And this is even in comparison to those who who just did caloric restriction. So even in that front, even in the same study with alternate day fasting, you saw muscle retention was more powerful and more potent in the 16-8 group as no one in the 16-8 group showed any loss of muscle tissue. And of course, the effectiveness of the fast itself, elevated autophagy levels, insulin sensitivity, IGF-1 increase, blood pressure reduction, blood glucose reduction, the reduction of insulin resistance, oxidative stress going down, down, ghrelin reduction all of those things have been seen even with the 16-8 model and ghrelin is the hunger hormone that tries to tell your body to eat reducing this is beneficial to controlling your food intake when you control for calories many studies with the 16-8 model are positive when you do early time restricted feeding these studies have been overwhelmingly positive and the model that they normally use is the 16-8 model so is it to say that the warrior diet may not one day raise to prominence and be the protocol that you should do based on the studies itself? No, but based on what we have, based on all of the things that we do have at our disposal, if you wanted to just pick one and you needed to see which one is the better one for you and you're in fear of falling off of the whole intermittent fasting protocol or you're in fear of not knowing what's going to happen long term or if you eat earlier or later, the safer bet will always be the 16-8 because we have more data on the 16-8 and the data that we have for the 16-8 has been overwhelmingly positive. But do take into account certain elements. For example, the longer you fast, the more insulin sensitive you become and the more body fat you're burning in that process because you're in a fasted state. Autophagy levels are also increased the longer you fast and that is going to be a negative towards the 16-8 because inherently due to the protocol itself, you're not fasting longer than the warrior diet, which is 20 hours or one meal a day, which tends to be about 23 hours. So those elements are gonna be better in things like the warrior diet or one meal a day. But based on the studies that we currently have, the data that we have, the 16A is consistently shining in terms of adherence, in terms of results, in terms of the methodology, even in terms of fasted cardio, the 16A has a consistent positive clip with these results when it comes to the studies that we currently have. So if you were thinking, which one's the best protocol based on the studies, I'm not sure. Hopefully this video has helped you with that. But the most important thing is what you want to do. What's gonna work for you? What's the protocol that you like the most? Cause at the end of the day, it's all about which one you're gonna stick to. And of course, as always guys, I'm gonna go ahead and put my patrons for my Patreon right up here.
And of course, as always, guys, I'll see you on Wednesday for another FAQ. Peace!